Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the channel for today's video and today we're going to be reviewing our KLX 140RF. So I'll start by just giving you guys kind of a walk around of the bike itself. So quickly we'll just run over just the basic things about the bike so you got an understanding of what this bike is. We have a 144cc air-cooled engine. We've got a 21 inch front tire. We've got an 18 inch rear tire. We have conventional front forks. They're not inverted so like some of the MX bikes. We have disc brakes both front and rear. Now comparing the KLX 140RF to the conventional 140s. This one does have longer front forks as well as an extended rear swing arm to accompany the larger wheel set that this bike has. Now, if you guys are looking at picking up one of these KLX 140s and you're trying to choose between which bike in the lineup, I'll say the RF is definitely the best trail bike and best suited for someone who's taller rider. Now, having the larger wheels on the bike definitely, definitely helps getting over any of like the rough obstacles or harder terrain. Uh, it just makes it a whole lot easier to climb up and over stuff. Now, one of the first things you might notice is that this front fender looks a little bit different and that's because we have swapped over a KX100 front fender onto the bike which gives it a much more aggressive look in the front end compared to the original duck bill. Now this is a pretty easy swap and it's a direct bolt-on with minor modifications and it looks absolutely sick. You guys can also tell we've got some engine covers on the bike as well as some frame protectors and a skid plate which helps protect the bike from when you're banging it up on the trails. Now we've also picked up a set of a service hand guards which definitely helps when you're dropping the bike and learning how to ride. Now this bike is an absolute perfect bike for anyone who's looking to begin into their hard enduro series and they really want to start progressing their riding from a pit bike style bike into something more full size without doing the full jump all the way up to a full size dirt bike. Now this thing has everything full size minus a frame. It's got a pit bike style sized frame in it which gives you a lower ground clearance which is going to help you be able to touch the ground when you sit on it. Now for reference I'm six foot one and when I sit on this bike I can easily touch the ground with a slightly bent knee, so it gives me lots of stability if I need to put my feet down and catch myself from falling over, which really helps build rider confidence when you're first learning to ride. Now another feature that all the KLX 140s come standard with is electric start which is an absolute game changer when you're out on the trail stalling the bike a whole bunch. And this is one of the main reasons I picked up one of these bikes and that I was really looking into them as for the price point coming with electric start is a huge, huge pro and something you definitely want to have. Now this bike does not have a Kickstarter, which kind of sucks, but it's okay because the electric start really is trustworthy and I've never had a single issue with it. Now for reference, we do have an hour meter down here and we have about 20 hours on the bike of ride time. And this thing has been absolutely awesome and an absolute blast to ride out on the trails. Now this bike does come with a kickstand which is great a lot of MX bikes don't and you end up having to lean it up against a tree or something but this is great as it does have a kickstand so you can just go ahead and pop that guy up. Now that you've gotten to see a quick overview of the KLX 140 let's go ahead and let's take it out for a bit of a ride and we'll talk about some of the pros and some of the cons. So let's go ahead we'll go and stick her down into first and let's get a good old like motocross style uh, rip -a -rooney. so got her down into first we'll go all the way up into fifth and uh, let's just rip it and see how quick this thing is. All right, here we go. shines up in the trails here. So let's go ahead and let's hop onto a trail. And that's where this thing really starts to shine. It's when you get it into some more technical stuff.
Oh yeah, baby. Now, if you guys are interested in hill climbs and how it does, let's give this one a shot. We got her in second gear right now, and let's just go for it. Woo! So it's got enough juice that even if you get lower in the RPMs, it still pulls in second, which is great. Now, the last bike that we're coming off of is an XR100. Now this thing does a whole heaps of a lot better on these hill climbs compared to that XR. It's a lot more stable and these big wheels really are to attribute for that as well as the suspension is just a lot a lot better than that XR100 I had. Woo! And you can tell like this thing really is kind of like it doesn't have a lot of horsepower, but there's enough torque to pull throughout the gears. And this bike really does work well, really well in the trails. And that's where you'll notice it to be the most fun. Woohoo! You really can take this thing anywhere. And as I was saying earlier, some of my favorite parts about the bike is that how low it is, but like how not low it is. So like you got a really low seat height, you got really high ground clearance. So it makes it ideal for when you're in the technical trail stuff is that the bottom, the bottom of the bike isn't hitting. It's never bottoming it out on stuff, but you're still easily able to reach the ground to put your feet down. And it's excellent because if you stall it, you got this electric start button and away you go again. No kickstart, no fuss no mess so if you got someone who's looking to get into riding and you know they're gonna give up if they have to kickstart a bike a bunch when they're learning the clutch this is great having that electric start the thing fires up right away every time and it, you can just count on it. you can really count on the bike to just do what you need it to do when you want it to do it and then having both dual disc brakes front and rear makes it really easy to stop on a dime with this thing it really does just just stops man compared to drum brakes having these disc brakes is an absolute huge bonus and i absolutely love having disc brakes on this bike they work extremely well Woohoo! now the bike is carbureted is not fuel injected but just look how good the snap response is ready we just you just snap your wrist no bog, no hesitation. Woo! And this thing will just, whoa! Yeah, she's got enough torque to have fun. But she's no powerhouse. Woo! She's got more than enough snot. Do a donut. Like top speed that is fun. Now this bike is a five speed and it is your conventional one down, neutral half a click up, and then the rest are all up shifts. So if you got someone who's trying to learn the proper transmission of a dirt bike and not a Chinese dirt bike where it's like neutrals at the bottom, this will get someone to be able to learn a conventional dirt bike transmission as well. Now something else that's a big pro about this bike is that there is so much aftermarket support for these bikes, especially uh, power adding mods. Uh, I just love this bike. Honestly guys, this bike is super sweet. I really do like it. It's a lot of fun to ride with. And I really do enjoy just like the whole combination of the pit bike frame, big wheels, long suspension, extended swing arm, full size seat. It just, the whole package as a whole is awesome. And it really is in a class of its own. There is no other dirt bike that you can get with a pit bike size frame with all the full size components and full size wheel set front and rear. And that's what really makes this bike its own bike. And what I really like about it the most is that it's really just a comfortable, good sized learning bike to get riding on enduro. Now, if I was to say there's any cons about this bike, I'd be the biggest con is that A, it doesn't have a lot of power, but you can fix that with some modifications, which we will be featuring later on the channel. So you guys make sure 
sure you stick around and subscribe so you guys can check that video out when that comes out. And we're gonna be showing you how you guys can make some more power with one of these KLX 140s, whether it's an RF, an L model, or just the base R. Now, another huge pro that I really like about this bike is its weight. This is the lightest weight, four stroke, full size wheeled bike you can get that's out on the market. There's just nothing else quite like it. Now this thing comes in at 208 pounds without any fuel in it, and that's lighter than any other four stroke. The next lightest bikes are the gas gases and all the race MX bikes. Now those without any fuel are coming in at 218 pounds. So this bike's even lighter than those. There really isn't enough good things I could say about this KLX 140 RF. If you guys are in the market and you're thinking of picking up one of these bikes, leave any questions you have down in the comment section below and we'll be sure to answer them for you. Now this bike is able to keep its weight so low thanks to being air cooled. Now you can see here we have our air fins. There's no liquid cooler. Uh, there's no radiator, there's no coolant, and that's how we're able to keep the weight down on the bike is by having none of that stuff. Now, I've never had any issues with it overheating, getting too hot, or any of that, and we'll be sure to continue to put it to the test and see if it ends up needing an oil cooler. Now, personally, I don't think it will need an oil cooler as I've never had an issue with it yet, but we're sure to let you guys know what happens in the future. Now, if I were to list one more con, the last con will be it just doesn't have a, uh, a super high top speed. And that's, uh, you really only notice that when you're getting to and from trails and you're following some of the other larger full size, like 350, 450, four strokes, 300, two strokes kind of stuff when they're on the main roads, they're kind of able to leave you in the dust with this bike. So this bike really does just shine best when we're in the tight and gnarly trail sections. So you could say it leaves some to be desired up at the top end. I hope you guys have enjoyed my quick review of the KLX 140 RF. Like I said, if you have any questions, make sure to go down below, leave them in the comment section. Let me know what your questions are. I'll answer them. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you go down below, leave a like. It really does support the channel, gets this review out to more people so more people can know about this bike as I really do think this is gonna be an up and coming, like popular bike. And I think a lot of people are gonna be wanting these bikes and they already are pretty sweet. Make sure you go down below, click subscribe if you enjoyed today's video, ring the bell notification so you don't miss when we upload the video, when we do some big bore and some nasty cam in this bike and make it an absolute ripper. You won't want to miss out, I'm telling you what. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.